Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here today. I have three important points I'd like to make. First is that I have no financial interest or relationships to disclose. Second is that everything you're going to learn at this meeting will be completely useless to you unless you have a view to the back of the eye. My third point is that endoscopy offers us a simple and effective solution to this problem and also opens up completely new areas for discovery and treatment. How is that for an, uh, an offer? The uh, endo-optics endoscope uh, packages an en endoscopy, illumination, and laser into a 19-gauge probe and, more recently, into a 23-gauge probe. The endoscope can be used during vitrectomy, and it provides an independ an independ it's independent of poor media. Also, depending on the sclerotomy used, it gives you variable perspectives, and it also offers high magnification. For instance, we're able to do intracapsular pars plana lensectomy, as seen here, or intravitreal pars plana lensectomy, as seen here. The endoscope is particularly helpful in identifying and removing small hidden fragments of lens material at the vitreous base. Good. Endoscopic membrane peeling provides high magnification, a small field of view, and unfortunately a lack of stereopsis. In this next case of recurrent uh, retinal detachment with type 4 or encircling circumferential PVR, we performed membrane peeling with a retinal pick as well as with ILM forceps. Due to the extent of traction, a relaxing retinotomy was created by first endodiathermizing retinal vessels, as Dean just pointed out, and using the vitreous cutter, creating the relaxing retinotomy. Perfluorocarbon oil tamponade was used to reattach the retina, followed by diode laser endophotocoagulation treatment at the edges. I found the endoscope to be particularly helpful in the fluid air exchange right here, where the view is excellent while all subretinal fluid is removed. Finally, you have the endoscopic view of siliconoil placement. Another group of patients who've benefited greatly due to the endoscope are patients who develop postoperative hypotony due to epiciliary body membranes. In these cases, not only does the endoscope allow you to visualize the problem quite well, but allows you to treat it either with the vitrector or sharp, sharply dissect it with the MVR blade or dissect it with the vertical forceps as seen here. This provides us with great promise with regards to normalizing intraocular pressure in patients with hypotony. Pars plana endoscopic cyclophotocoagulation treatment requires a vitrectomy. It allows us to have more extensive treatment to the ciliary processes versus the anterior approach. And it requires two ports in order to provide 12 clock hours of treatment. This next case is a patient with a Boston keratoprosthesis with uncontrolled glaucoma. You can see through the biome view how clearly we can see the posterior pole, but unfortunately the view of the periphery is quite poor. In this case, the endoscope is focused and then introduced into the eye, revealing uh, a significant amount of vitreous, which then can be safely and simply removed with a vitreous cutter. This patient had three, uh, 12 clock hours 
of diode laser endoscopic cyclophotocoagulation treatment and had excellent postoperative pressure control. Finally, you have the endoscopic view of the Boston keratoprosthesis. Another group of patients that are benefited by the endoscopy are patients with neovascular glaucoma. In these patients, panretinal photocoagulation treatment can be very effectively placed in areas of ischemic retina. The endoscope is particularly valuable, though, in treating the far periphery of the retina between the equator and the aura serrata, areas that we don't typically do such a great job at treating. And finally, 12 clock hours of diode laser endoscopic cyclophotocoagulation treatment are applied, also with excellent postoperative control. Endoscopy pros are the increase in visualization that allow us to simply and effectively do cases that we might not otherwise be able to do. Second, ciliary body membrane peeling is truly a, a, a new area of treatment that allows us to treat hypotony due to epiciliary body membranes. And finally, Endoscopy allows us to do excellent peripheral panretinophotocoagulation treatment in patients with ischemic retinopathies. The endoscopy cons are a slight learning curve, a lack of stereopsis, especially with regards to membrane peeling, and a suboptimal view with the 23-gauge probe. Thank you for your attention.